Okay, great. So here we have the default Laravel landing page like we expect. So let's first find something to translate. Let's replace the Laravel text with hello world. So we find that by going to the resources, views and welcome. And you'll see it here. So let's type hello world. And of course it works. But let's say that we wanted to translate this between English and Spanish. So how do we do that? Okay, great question. Our first task is to set up a middleware that will check the current language that the user wants their website to get displayed in. So let's start with creating the middleware. Middleware is stored in the app HTTP middleware folder and here is our file. So let's get started coding this middleware. The first thing we need is to check if our session already has the variable that we're going to use called locale. So if the session has the variable locale, then first off we need to check if the given value is serialized because some earlier versions of Laravel did this. So we call string pass and then we get variable locale. We're going to check if it has the syntax in it, which means that it's serialized. We need to check if that's not false. In that case, we simply just call unserialize on that given variable. Otherwise, we simply just get that same value and return it. Next off, we import the app facade, like so. If your IDE does not import it automatically, you can see it up here. And we call the set locale on it with our given input. So the next thing can be that if the session doesn't have locale, it's possible that a cookie has it, so we can actually restore the locale from there and make sure we put it into the locale. So if our request has a cookie with the name of locale, then we are going to put into the session with the variable name locale, we are going to take this cookie and just simply input it here. And again, we need to basically take the same thing here and put it down here. Oh yeah, that's right. And in this last case, neither the cookie nor the session has any previous settings stored. So we are going to do some checks and, and we can actually perform a, a few tricks to make it more seamless for the user. So the first thing is that we are going to try to fetch the actual language preference from the browser itself. And you can actually do this pretty simply by just calling the server method on the request and passing in the header HTTP accept language. This header is a comma separated list with the most preferred starting from the left and the least preferred ending at the right. So what we can do is simply call explode on this. The delimiter is a comma. We're going to pass in this. Next up, we're going to take the first instance from this. In certain cases, we can have other things included. This will be like the query preference. So just a number from zero to one on how much the user prefers it. So to check for this, we can just call string pass on this. And all we need to do is check if it has this value because the, the format would be if we chose English, it would be EN, the semicolon, and then something like this. So all we need to do is check if this exists. And if it does, then we just filter everything after it and we get the EN. This is probably not the most clean way to do it, but it, it, it works. So we just call another explode on this and we take the first parameter otherwise we just take the first all that's left to do now is simply put it into the session like so but we need to replace this with a string to lower on the preferred language and let's also remember to set the locale and this is all for middleware so you can close this file now so next up we need to inside the http folder there is a file called kernel we need to actually go in here and register a new locale middleware. So to do that, we just import it. I prefer to write out the whole name like so. So now it's it's going to be run every time the web middleware runs. At this point, we have pretty much full control of the language in the application itself. It knows how to restore when there's no setting. It knows to load the settings and apply it to the application. Next up, let's make a translation file inside the resources, language, and English folder. Let's just call it hello world.php. Translation file just needs to return an array 
of key and values. Let's not make it too complicated and just call this hello world. And in the English version, we want to see this. Now let's go ahead and make a Spanish folder and we're going to make the exact same file. So this is what Google Translate came up with. I hope it's correct, but it doesn't really matter because we're just proving an example here. Next off to allow your application to actually check what language is set in the application on runtime, we need to pass in that we need this to be translated. To do that, I call the language function on Blade and we just pass in first the file name. If you remember, that was hello world in one word. Next key inside the file, which was hello underscore world, like so. And this needs to be consistent throughout the languages. So let's see how that works so far. And we get the exact same thing, which is exactly what we wanted because the application is still set to English. So what we need to do next is set up a controller and a route so we can actually dynamically change the language. Let's go into our newly created controller. Let's set up a method that we're just gonna call store, which accepts the parameter of language. So a good way to filter this, in my opinion, is that we have some list called supported languages, which will just be array of the names. And next we're going to check if the language that the user passed in does not exist inside the supported languages list that we have, like so. So if we do that, we're going to redirect back. You could pass in session messages, etc. here, and you could also make this live in a config file, so you don't need to re retype it over and over again, but this will do fine, for example. So in this case down here, the user has typed in a language which is supported. So all we need to do is put this inside our session variable called locale, and we're just going to call string to lower on the language again. And in this case, we're also just going to return back. Next up, let's set up a route for this inside the web.php. Now, let's check that this works. We go in here, we refresh, and hello as, as usual. Now we go to the route we set up, language, slash, and let's set it to Spanish. And yeah, we see the result. You can fiddle with this and extend the functionality. You can make it more easy with a dropdown, with links to change the language. But this is the core fundamentals that you need. And all you need to really do is build out the translation files here. And you need to, in your Blade files, use this syntax to use the translations. So thank you so much for watching. That's it for me. See you next time.